The following video may contain sensitive topics. The views and opinions of the presenter to these are plainly his own. Furthermore, any and all views and opinions of the presenter do not in any way reflect the views, opinions, statements, and advocacies of his personal contacts, his family, his affiliations, and his profession. While the presenter makes a commitment that all content is original, he is obliged to cite references or acknowledge resources mentioned or used in the production of this video. This disclaimer is also written in the description below. Kumusta yung mga cancer? Wait. Anong intro na naman? Ah. Ay, ano ba yan? Yan ang dami mong alam. Ah. Ang dami palang alam ha. Pero alam mo, pati si Gadon, bobo na rin. Katulad mo. Hi there, Ian here. Now, what is the connection between bullying and the brain drain? And what separates the cringy from the downright intolerable. It's the prince and principle of capital sins, pride. And it's the virus that all of us have been infected with. And yes, for this episode of Insight, we will talk about why pride seems to be the main problem our world is facing today. And it may be semi-scripted for this video only, uh, as I only have some talk points here, which I can explain it better if I do it freely than in a script. So, uh, uh, mag lib ako by this time. Pero may mga talk points ako. But before all that, first of all, etong ginamit ko na barrel, wala siyang laman na, yan na, wala, 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 okay? So, um, this gun is an airsoft gun, okay? So, I'm not really into uh, brandishing this uh, for this video, pero uh, I think na, meron kasing meme na ano eh, na marami ka ng alam bata or whatever it is. Anyway, uh, again, it's empty. Nothing here is gonna say ouch. I just pulled the trigger, walang nangyari, walang namatay, whatever. So, and it's a replica gun, and, and I'm not supposed to uh, wear this or bring this in the uh, outside. In the outside, dito lang yung sa loob, and uh, I just used it for this kit. And uh, once the pandemic is over, and once I have the means to play, I'll play some airsoft hopefully so before all of that let me give you some context right now in this absolutely difficult time which we can now we can now coin as the great coronavirus pandemic of 2020 no thanks to the 2019 coronavirus disease or COVID-19 many people struggle yours truly included and to make all things worse there is bickering without and discouragement within and sadly many people die not only to the pandemic but also by their own hands and uh, it's a trigger warning kasi marami tayo mga sabihin dito na medyo sensitive uh, although I had this uh, disclaimer I also have this disclaimer here for a uh, trigger warning if ever uh, you're experiencing or you can relate to these things please um, watch this video at your own risk and uh, please uh, know that you're never alone in this uh, in this regard and as I said I'm included in the people who are struggling really hard at this point so uh, I have to get that um, uh, get that uh, said for this video it is really sickening and it's really sad that these things happen but that's the reality we're facing and because we need to survive and not be worse off we'll do anything and everything to get ourselves still in the game we call life even at the expense of others 
In short, pride destroys the best in us. Okay, so uh, here are the talk points. So uh, I switched cameras. If you notice, medyo uh, medyo iba yung quality dun sa cam- sa unang video kaysa dito sa ano to. And uh, you, you may notice na mag- para magkaiba talaga sila. It's because I'm currently recording on the phone and uh, I've been simultaneously recording as well from the camera and uh, piyatay ko muna kasi mahina battery niya it's a very old camera uh, by the way and I actually tried it before for a video pero ewan ko hindi ko siguro na hindi ko siguro alam ko paano ko siya gagamitin or paano ko tatanggalin yung mga videos uh, from that uh, video or from that camera pero Uh, I'll deal with that uh, personally outside um, this video, so it's gonna be a post prod thing. Now, some talk points. Lima yung gagawin kong talk points dito, and I hope I can uh, squeeze this as much as possible. Now, we all know that Makagago has been an online bully. Okay, so Mark Jason Warna Kulahewa, aka Makagago, is uh, this guy who has been. Doing a lot of um, uh, a lot of stupid stuff uh, when it comes to telling people that uh, they are wrong or whatever, and uh, syempre, marami ang umalma sa pagiging ano niya, uh, parang shock jock. But it's not on radio, pero nasa nasa YouTube ka, so shock YouTuber or whatever. Uh, let's say. Siyang equivalent yata ni Alan Jones Alan Jones sa Australia <laughs> uh, Or Sino bang shock jump dito sa Pilipinas? Di ko alam eh Pero If um, Ang pinaka ano, Ang pinaka Ano siguro dito is yung uh, Si Alan Jones Formerly of 2GB in uh, Australia uh, Now he's out of the radio waves But he's still on uh, On TV On Aussie TV So better get his stuff together mate <laughs> or sabihin na natin uh, to get it closer on ano, on YouTube uh, itself uh, siguro the uh, the nearest thing to uh, to being uh, to compare Makagago with is uh, either Keemstar or Ethan Klein so uh, I've already tackled that and uh between the uh, King versus Ethan uh, beef internationally and the Makagago versus Nico, Nico David beef here in the Philippines. I've dealt with that on another video. Uh, just check it out there. Stas. Anyway, I don't want to waste your time about this because uh, really, Makagago was an OFW once. He was an expatriate and uh, For someone who has uh, uh, mixed ethnicity, it's a bit um, iffy as well, if he really was. But, uh, to give him the benefit of the doubt, sige, OFW siya dati. And uh, quite honestly, a lot of OFWs are a bit um, iffy, have an iffy attitude na uh, meron silang sense of attack. Now, expatriates seem to have this sense of entitlement for having experienced the rigors of working abroad, including being bullied by the natives and citizens of the uh, of the country that they are residing to, and uh, even in their in the country of their origin. You know what? My old man worked as a seafarer once, and while I see a bit of that attitude in him, he somehow discourages us, his children. To be like him, although I admit I have, I seem to inherit some of his uh, mannerisms. Ngayon, not all expatriates, not all OFWs uh, are like that. I had a classmate back in college who, uh, who lived most of her life in Africa and uh, just went to Manila to study. Ngayon nasa Japan na siya and she's been working and uh, she also found uh, she has also found her uh, partner there uh, who happened to be an American, 
expatriate in Japan. So, um, hindi ko napapangalanan, pero kill ako. Kill mo na ako sino ka. Pero, and, uh, and I see your attitude as different. You're not the typical expatriate that uh, most Filipinos are. Lalo na kung laki, laki dito sa Pinas, tapos lumipad para magtrabaho abroad. And then, uh, kung ano yung mga nangyayari sa Pilipinas, eh, nagko-comment ka, nagko-comment siya comments yan na uh, ng mga bagay-bagay na medyo wishy-washy or whatever. Basta ganun. They have this sense of entitlement. And uh, it's bad. It's absolutely bad. Yun yata ang ano eh, sitwasyon ni, ni MG eh. Promise. Yun yung nakikita ko sa kanya eh. The way he talks napuno ng hangin. Yun yun eh. We have this other side of Makagago uh, after he was debunked by Nigo Tabuti. Parang nagkaan na siya. Parang nililinis na niya yung pangalan niya. But quite honestly, he's not doing it very well. Uh, especially when he tried to make uh, some commentaries about Eman Nimedes who, uh, who recently passed away. And uh, may he rest in peace. Alam ko, nilibig na siya by the time of this video. And, uh, really, it's, ano, bakit pinagpeperahan pa rin niya yung uh, kamatayan ng isang YouTuber na pati yung mga videos niya, eh, yung ads. Maybe if I did uh, get monetized in this platform, if I ever have these in-memoriam videos, I would never monetize them. I would never put ads on them. I would never monetize them. It's just that I just have to share those, and uh, quite honestly, it's uh, it's gonna be a uh, very short videos. Katulad ng ginawa ko kay Kobe Bryant, kay Bob Osorio. Uh, yung mga obituary videos ko, I'll I'll demonetize them personally. Makagago, being Makagago is doing his thing. And then, uh, kiniklaim niya na lahat ng ano niya, uh, kikitain niya dun eh, bibigay niya kay Eman, aanhin mo, aanhin na pa ang damo, patay na ang kabayo. Diba? In the case of Doc Adam, though, he's intending to um, donate naman din eh. And, uh, he's been very charitable as well. And much charitable than uh, than Mark Jason. I'm not really sure why. And he's getting involved in this. And, uh, I can't blame it. I can't blame that Aussie GP. Uh, he's just doing what he's doing and then, you know, sa kanan, I mean, it just snowballed into, uh, into this. And, uh, he's been bullying as well. He's been bullying both bad content creators and good content creators. Hindi lang si Looney, hindi lang si Luis Castaqui, hindi lang si Nico David. But I found out that he's also he also this V Cortez, V V Cortez, girlfriend of Kong TV Velasquez and owner and CEO of V9, the first lady of Team Payaman. I mean, why? Why did Mark Jason this this lady? Dahil ba dun sa uh, nag-flop na Vizar last year na parang natulfo pa si, ano, si V dahil sa mga reklamo ng mga ano, ng mga uh, involved dun sa bazaar na yun. I mean, things can be settled without being uh, seen on national television and on YouTube. Pwede naman siyang isettle outside any legal um, uh, legal processes and all that mag-usap na ng maayos I mean really it's it's just too uh, complicated that these things happen and napaka-ungentlemanly naman yata yun para sa akin na, na mag-de-disc ka ng babae but makagago I mean he, makagago did it it's not the first time for Mahagawa anyway, so go figure.
quite honestly, it's because of Nico that it's speaking out about all the all the BS that um, he did on social media. It's because of that um, Nico David debunk. Mahagago is now kept in check for his words and for his actions. And currently, I am not sure kung um, tuloy, tuloy pa rin yung kaso, but I really hope that it won't. Uh, it won't uh, have to go to court. Kasi, quite honestly, it's it's just too much. Yun lang masasabi ko lang. So, uh, I really can't uh, comment that much when it comes to the legal uh, legal beef that they have. I have to say, bullying is a vicious cycle and Makagago may have the best of intentions to make common sense commentary but you know, he has gone too far to the point of being the bully himself. Ako, I'm siguro na nararamdaman ko na bully victim dati si Marquez na bata siya dahil nga mukha siyang karabo and all that and uh, nabubully siya and all that and then ngayon na uh, ganto na na hi, uh, ngayon na halos kasi magkasing tanda lang siguro kami to be honest and uh, now that he is a father and I think he has to be a good example not only to his uh, not only to his son but also to other people dahil nga he's out there on YouTube he's out there on YouTube doing all these videos so I really hope that uh, magtanda na si Mahaga promise this is not uh, this is not uh, child's play anymore so yun lang okay well um sobrang haba nun and uh, this is gonna be very uh, long uh, sorry sorry guys now uh, there has been a recent xenophobia against religion specifically Catholicism and uh, I've already tackled this in few of my videos um, check nyo lang dito sa mga playlists sa description sa baba yung mga ano yung mga videos ko tungkol sa religion and all the things that I've, uh, I'm asking about uh, rhetorical questions why this, why that uh, it's all in the description below now, the thing is religious services are still heavily restricted at this point in this recording kasi hindi ko nga alam kung ano eh, kung bakit uh, nagkakaroon pa ng confusion between uh having 10% of the capacity of a church or a mosque or a temple uh, or 10 people lang ang, ang, ang pwede sa loob ng isang misa o sa loob, sa loob ng isang uh, prayer service. It's heavily restricted and yet restaurants and malls are open either for dine-in or take-out and as well as ano, yung purchase of goods. I get it. I get it that um, these things or these um, uh, establishments still have to open not only for the economy but also for the needs of the people. That's why I'm not uh, saying uh, they have to close as well. Pero it only goes to show the utilitarianist tendencies of the powers that be and do not get, give a damn on the health of souls. Kesyo, nagbabayad sila ng buwis. Eh, uh, they are important. Important sila. Everyone else, specifically religious institutions, since they are not paying taxes, wala, wala silang ambag. Yun yung, ano, yun yung common thinking ng ibang tao. And that's very dangerous and that's very uh, toxic thinking. Quite honestly. Kasi, maraming religious institutions ang nagko-contribute uh, on their freaking own. They don't have to ask for government help and all that. I get it. I get it. Some of the people who are saying those things, eh, parang sinasabi din nila sa ibang tao, eh, uh, pwede ka naman magdasal sa loob ng bahay mo, eh. Sure, you can pray everywhere you want, and, uh, and it's very, um, uh, 
it's very it's a very good idea but uh, restricting them to go to church go to mosque go to temple and uh, pray to their uh, pray to their divine beings or their, their respective divine beings for uh, uh, retribution and uh, salvation from the and redemption as well from this current pandemic I mean why? Bakit? Let me paraphrase my point the last time I tackled about the new normal in places of worship. Okay? Well, it is good. I- it is a good idea to pray everywhere you are. And indeed, it is commendable even at the risk of distraction. Sobrang nakaka-distract talaga kung, mag- kung magdarasal ka lang sa loob ng bahay or elsewhere outside kung lalabas ka man. Outside of curfew hours, of course. It seems people will get more focused in prayer if they visit a dedicated house of prayer, such as a, mo- a church, a mosque, a temple, etc., than in the marketplace. Mas makakapagdasal ka pag nasa loob ka na simbahan, nasa loob ka na isang mosque, nasa loob ka sa isang, isang templo. Mas makakapagdasal ka doon kesa pag nagsashopping ka or nagmumuni-muni ka habang kumakasal. Houses of prayer are designed to be what it is. Houses of prayer. Uh, structures or places for people to pray. If you're not letting people pray in those houses of prayer, they'll do a lot of things. And uh, sadly, one of them is to end their lives. And uh, just recently, the Department of Justice or its secretary, the Attorney General, uh, Menardo Guevara, has been calling on religious institutions to uh, somehow help with uh, telling people, may pag-asa pa, huwag kayo mawala ng pag-asa. It's a generally good call, okay? It's a generally good call from the Attorney General. And uh, basically, the Attorney General is the Secretary of Justice, okay? So, that's how I see things. It's a generally good call from the Attorney General, but I have some reservations. While there are competent men in the priesthood and competent men and women in the in religious life who also have credentials in psychology, they are very, very, very few. Napaka-kaunti nila at uh, kung tutuusin, eh, mas tutok sila sa uh, either sa pastoral work nila o sa profession nila depende sa ano nila yung background nila and to and to segue uh, and to segue really uh, quick into the brain drain part it's just ironic that Filipinos are rooting for professionals these days kasi uh, may nakita din nata kung boom eh, na uh, because of the IETF is uh inviting religious groups to help uh, curb as well the uh, rise of suicides and uh, other uh, other expressions of mental illness and all that. It's, uh, it's just ironic that Filipinos are basically pitting science and religion against each other. Nakakatawa na nakakainis. And to uh, make another point about bullying. Medical frontliners are bullied and scorned for their work. Quite honestly, this is the lowest of the low. Ginagawa mo na nga ang pinubuli mo, pinubuli ka pa. Diba? Ang, ano, nakakainis. And, uh, quite honestly, at this point, eh, I don't know. Really, it's, um, ironic that people or or who are of reli- of religious backgrounds are uh, not considered as people who are on the front lines and uh, really nakakaano lang itong pambubuli talaga ang ano eh, ang sumisira sa ano eh, sa pagkatao natin lahat eh, bilang mga Pilipino now uh, Filipino scientists as well are unwilling to return to contribute to uh, curbing this pandemic as well as other scientific um, scientific uh, endeavors quite honestly yung balik is uh, balik scientist program 
ng Department of Science and Technology, it's not working. Walang ipin. Meron man, parang mahina, mapurol, quite honestly. It's in the culture of Filipinos na yung ang dami mo ng ang dami mong alam na culture. Kaya yung yun yung ano eh, yun yung uh, skit ko eh, gina, gina, ginaya ko yung intro ni Paul. Tapos ano, tapos sa uh, may na, parang reply is ang dami mong alam. Yun yung problema sa ating mga Pilipinos. Sa sobrang proud natin sa sarili natin. We are proud of our ignorance na pati yung mga may eksperto ay sinasabihan natin ang dami mong alam. It's toxic. It's absolutely toxic. Really. And uh, because of this young adults outside the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics are discouraged with the lack of backdoor options. Quite honestly, as someone who had been more on humanities than STEM, that is a uh, background from college, walang backdoor eh para sa mga katulad namin para mag para mag, uh, makapag-stem kami kahit pa ba or at least some kind of scientific uh, background katulad ng archaeology or historical archaeology or even history for, <laughs> for crying out loud kasi I really wanted to uh, masters as well in history that, pero I don't really know kung paano ko paanin yun paano ko i-relate yun and uh, really, it's discouraging for people like us that there's a lack of backdoor options for um, humanities-related uh, professionals to uh, get some alternative learning schemes for them to uh, enroll to STEM programs and somehow rekindle that flame of science and engineering and all that without without snuffing out the fire of philosophy theology and all all the other humanities because two fires are better than one if you wanna if you wanna uh, illuminate a place two fires are better than one two flames are better than Yun yun eh. Again, the pitting of science and religion against each other must bloody stop. Really. Because they work hand in hand. Maraming mga uh, maraming mga katolikong pare na scientists. Back in the 16th century, most of them were Jesuits. There are a lot of scientists who are also priests, religious, whatever. So, I just have to get it there. One more thing. Two more things, actually. Uh, I-segue ko na yung sa isang pangyayari na medyo uh, confusing talaga. And that is the assassination of uh, left-leaning CPP legal front leaders. Now, we have heard some we have heard, heard some news about uh, them being killed and I don't know how how that happens and while I absolutely do not condone the principles the groups these victims affiliate themselves to while still alive it is nonetheless alarming that these killings happen full stop I really don't like their ideology promise I can definitely say that the first time but I am it's not to the point. I'm not someone who is uh, uh, opposed to that ideology to the point that you will kill people. Iba na yan. Bloodlust na yan, mga kababayan. I, hindi, hindi ko yan ano, hindi ko yan, it's not my cup of tea. It's absolutely not my cup of tea. Okay. So, I just wanted to get it there. Lastly, cancel culture and uh, quite honestly I don't know if this is the nth time that I've been uh, talking about cancel culture I really don't want to get this straight but what there's a there's this article ilalagay ko na lang yung link sa description sa baba uh, 
there's this article from uh, Inyutum Today. Inyutum Today. I'm not sure how how it is uh, pronounced, pero the the link is on the description below, uh, which is entitled Jansenism and Cancel Culture. Just to give you a primer, what Jansenism is. It is a Catholic. It, it's a, it is a heresy. It is a Christian heresy. Uh, formerly a theological movement within Catholicism basically uh, with its origins in France that emphasized, emphasized original sin, human depravity the necessity of divine grace and predestination and, uh, and the proponent of this, uh, of this heresy uh, ironically is a Dutch theologian called Cornelius Jansen who died in 1638. So, ang ano eh, ang weird na ano eh, may gantong heresy, may ganitong kalokohan na nirefute ng ano, ng simbahang katolik. And, uh, really, it's, uh, that's just the primer of what Jansenism is. And, uh, and I tell you, it's not really a good thing, good way of thinking uh, in when it comes to theology. Uh, I'll just quote some lines here from this uh, from this article. Uh, there is a close connection between cancel culture and the heresy of Jansenism. Jansenism's error was to myopically assess the work of grace and perhaps oversimplify it. As a result, grace was seen as to not abound but to be extended to all people sufficiently. As a result, a Puritan-like attitude arose where if something is corrupt, the whole thing would be thrown out. Any slight imperfection meant, meant the whole thing was abject and worthy of condemnation. So, in other words, para siyang pak one, pak all eh. Kung may mali ang isa, mali lahat. Gine-generalize eh. It's something that I really don't want to, uh, to think about personally sa lahat ng bagay. But quite honestly, you can't help it. Pero, again, we are still alive. We still make mistakes while we're still alive. And it's better to, for us to make more mistakes while we, while we are living so that when we die, and we will all eventually die, people would, uh, people would say, this guy may, uh, may have done it wrong but in the end everything that he everything that he has done was right he was right you know that's what we would like to uh, say or that's what we would like people to say about us once we kick the bucket I know it's very hard very heavy, but it will happen. It will absolutely happen. Time alone in that. Now, what would I make of all these points? I dare say, this pandemic continues to teach us to keep ourselves in place and not desire too much powers and glories that will fleet and pass way too quickly. Instead of fame and glory, we should really look for ways to make our marks as good men and women, not just to live our lives to the fullest. It is hard and easier said than done, even I admit it is. But we all hope it's worth the try. I can really relate to that famous uh, flip-top battle rapper named Balakin when he made uh, this, uh, this line or this bar. Hanap mo victory, hanap ko legacy. This is what we should all remember, making a legacy of greatness in humility and holiness, not a legacy of infamy because of pride and sin. After all, mga kababayan, the one who has redeemed mankind shed his divine form to become a human being and experience death the most brutal 
way possible. In return, his name is above all names and has been mentioned the world over. And with all that said, this is Ian reminding you that every enlightenment and every insight is worth it as we aim for knowledge and seek wisdom. And at all times, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, and see you next time. Bye guys.